It's Tiki Technical Tuesday. This 26 millimeter diamond cutting bit just came in the mail and that means it is time to wrap up the water bearer Tiki Fountain project. I can't wait. Since we dug the hole for the fountain a few weeks ago, you can see the hole there to the left of the screen and the fountain itself is waiting to be put in the ground. It's in the bottom left corner of the screen. Lots of nocturnal visitors have swung by and checked out the progress on the fountain. Uh, the variety you see here will give you a pretty good idea of why I cannot wait to get the water fountain up and running uh, so we can attract even more wildlife. So along with the fountain, I got all of these parts and a pump to get the water coming out of the top of the water bearer. The most critical thing was the diameter of the thin piping. I needed to buy a drill bit that matched it exactly so I could drill a proper diameter sized hole in the top of the fountain and it would fit watertight without any glue or anything like that. Here we go. This diamond coated bit uh, is designed to cut through things like glass and ceramic and it goes through it really smoothly. I'm using the water to keep it cool so it doesn't overheat and you will notice a crack in the top of the water bear fountain. Totally fine. That happened during the drying process and I filled the back of the crack with glaze so it shouldn't leak and it should be watertight. All right. So again, don't worry about this crack. It's, it's not going to leak. And you can see that even though I was very careful in measuring the pipe, it's a tight fit, perhaps too tight. So I went back and slimmed it down with an X-Acto knife to help it fit into the hole a little bit better. And then I put it in there, hopefully permanently. So it's an absolutely beautiful day today. I think it is the last sunny, warm day that we are gonna have here in Eugene. So today I have got to finish this hole. Uh, what we're gonna do is I'm going to take some fine gravel and I'm going to level out the bottom of the hole and get it exactly the right depth uh, so that the fountain will sit in here flat. It'll be supported. It won't warp when I get the weight of the water in there um, and it won't settle into the ground. Hopefully the, the gravel will keep it from settling. Um, and then I have to cut a little channel for a uh, extension cord to get to the, the studio wall. I'm going to run it around the side of the studio down to an outlet that's over there. And then we're going to put it together and plug it in. I'm setting this long 2x4 over the hole as kind of the master ground level reference point. And then I'm going to cut this smaller 2x4 and use it like... I guess like I'm, I'm making a crepe. So I'm gonna put all the gravel into the bottom of the hole and just kind of spin that two by four around and level it all out, just, just like making a crepe. I'm doing my best to keep this level because this is going to be the support for the big ceramic sculpture. And I just want the water to come out, flow over the sides properly and you know, work. With the plastic fountain tub set into the ground, uh, there's just a few more things to do before we get the water turned on. First, I dug a little trench for the extension cord that is gonna eventually be hidden around the side of the studio. Then I gotta get this whole pipe plumbing thing figured out. Uh, and then the very last bit is I want to backfill all around this plastic tub with the fine gravel, uh, just so that the sides of the tub are very well supported. I know that there's gonna be a lot of water pressure in here and I just don't want it to warp on a hot, sunny day. Now I am in no way a plumber. I don't really know what I'm doing here. I'm just following the instructions from the guy that sold me the fountain. I'm not using any glue. He said not to glue this stuff together. And um, yeah, I'm hoping it works. Getting the garden hose and filling up the tub for the big moment of truth. At this point, I realized I forgot to check if this valve is open or closed. So I set it to the 45 degree position, figuring it's half open or half closed. And that way I won't have to have a panic when I turn the water on. Oh. 
Okay, I still cannot believe what a nice day it is. I'm, I know I'm going to be editing this in a couple days, looking at this sunlight in disbelief, but it is really a beautiful day. I'm going to take off now to the garden store and get some rocks to cover this plastic with. And then I'm going to get back and we are going to plug this thing in. Now, I put the little valve in halfway. I don't know how much water is going to come out of this. It might be a geyser. I just want it to trickle out, so we'll have to adjust the valve once I, you know, plug it in. Can't wait. All right, I'm back from the forest product store. I've got some cool rocks. Neat shade of green. I'm gonna try turning the water on now. Might get a little wet. God only knows. Oh. Oh. I'm dialing back the water just a little bit. I don't want it to be pouring out of the top. I just want a little trickle out of the top so that it just flows down two faces and fills the two pools. Okay, I can't believe it's actually going. Oh. Ah. Makes me feel good. The water's working great. Ah. So here it is, the finished water bearer fountain. So there you have it, the water bear, it's in, it's going. I love it, I love it. Always feels great to finish a project. It's, it's very exciting, it's very exciting to see it happening. We can see it, our studio windows are right there, so we'll be able to watch it all day. Hopefully he'll make us happy, uh, and I can't wait for critters to find him and drink from him, it's gonna be fantastic. With that said, we are shopping around for a critter cam. I wanna set up a camera here so we can get nighttime shots of all the visitors that we have come by the studio at night. I'm excited about that. I will, of course, post that when and if they do come. Um, until then, thank you for tagging along on this adventure, and I will see you on the next Tiki Technical Tuesday.